Запись стоит. Итак, друзья, добрый день. Мы начинаем наш очередной семинар. Надеюсь, что вам понравится. Мэри, uh, we are ready to, to start. She, she had to run to the restroom just for a moment. She will be right back, if that's okay. okay. Сейчас я тебе скину. Давай, Степан Владимир, чат меня поцелуй, поцелуй, Да, и всех остальных тоже мои горячие, горячие пожелания. И поцелуй. Владимир, вы меня слышите? Да, мы начинаем. Просто я не слышу. Hey, oh, Vladimir, I can, <coughs> can I just make an announcement? Uh, uh, we wait uh, uh, yes, of course. Of course. Yeah, so... Um, one hi, second. Just, just, oh, just one second. Then. Uh, Alex, okay, go ahead. Yeah, um, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's 9 a.m. here in the USA. Um, happy to be here again. Uh, with uh, with you with every one of you um just remember that next week we'll have a last training uh it's going to be on december 9 at the same time and uh that will wrap up all, all of our trainings and for that session we are actually planning to um you know to uh do a shorter uh training and and provide more time for questions and answers so if there's anything that you know that you didn't had a chance to to make you know to ask questions from the previous trainings and this ones uh make sure to bring your questions that day and then we'll have that conversation and hopefully we can provide some information that is going to be helpful helpful for for everybody um i'm just going to go ahead and present our presenters um, um so today we have uh, cliff cook he's an associate director for recreation and athletics at the leisure foundation and we also have Mary Allison Cook. She's the Associate Director of Communications at Lecture Foundation. She's also a, uh, a Paralympian in the sports of wheelchair basketball and has uh, both of them, Cliff and Mary Allison, have a lot of experience in uh, inclusive sports. And um, Mary Allison and Cliff can talk about the importance of having just access to that in the community. Uh, and we thought this was a great topic for this group because a lot of these sports uh, can also be taught in the school systems and um, in youth and children uh, programs or recreation. So they can, there's a lot of use for these sports. So um, uh, hopefully you get to hear some of the great stuff that happens here at Lakeshore Foundation and some of the programs that are run by Cliff and, um, and Mary Allison. So. We're just going to give Mary Alice in a couple of minutes. Um, she'll be back soon and then we get started.
and I am here. <laughs> there she is. Okay, we're ready for you, Mary. Go ahead. Okay, and I think I'm going to let Cliff kind of introduce himself really quickly, um, and then we'll get into the presentation um, about Lakeshore and, and what we do. Yeah, thank you, Mary Allison. And um, just hello, everyone from um, the United States of America. Um, we are so thrilled to be with you all this evening. And um, I wanted to just give a little bit of background about me and who I am. Um, I uh, started at Lakeshore Foundation about 13 years ago and um, started as a part-time um, employee and worked in our aquatics department, then um, became um, a recreation and athletics specialist and did hands-on programming with our members at Lakeshore um, and over the years have progressed through the facility, um, the foundation, and, and now um, am the associate director. So I kind of oversee our hands-on programming. Um, and so I have been from, from the very entry level, um, working part-time to, to uh, where I am today. And so have gotten to see uh, quite a, uh, all elements in terms of coordination and planning and execution of um, adapted programming and, and para sport. And I'm happy to share more with you. And um, again, my name is Mary Allison Cook, um, and I have been at Lakeshore for about 11 years. Um, I started. Um, when I first started working at Lakeshore, I also worked in our recreation and athletic department, um, coaching wheelchair basketball and coordinating primarily youth programming, um, and then made a transition into our communications department. About six years ago, I have a background and a degree in public relations and communications, so I'm really um, lucky to be able to kind of um, integrate both my passion for adapted and para sport, and then also my passion for um, communications. Um, to really promote disability and disability identity in a very broad way. Um, Alex mentioned, I also am a two-time Paralympian. Um, I uh, competed in the Beijing 2008 Paralympics and the London 2012 Paralympics in the sport of women's wheelchair basketball. So also have a, back, a strong background coming up um, as a para-athlete um, and uh, competing as well and coaching some as well. So today um, we're going to talk to you about introducing and integrating adapted or para sport into the community. And you will find that we are probably going to use three different words to kind of uh, three different words interchangeably. We might use the term adapted sport, para sport, or disability sport. And I'm sure there's a different word that your translator is translating in Russian. Uh, for those sports. But basically when we're talking about sport today, we're going to be talking about sport um, that uh, is either adapted or specifically designed for people with disabilities, but also sports that can be done in an inclusive way. So these could be sports that you find in the Paralympic Games, or these could be sports like um, American football, which is a really popular sport in our country that um, we've adapted uh, to create a, a wheelchair version of American football. So um, and those have been really popular programs for us. So we're going to talk a lot a different. We are going to talk about different types um, of sports. But first, um, who we are here at Lakeshore. We do a lot at Lakeshore and we have a very broad vision. Our vision is a world in which every person has the opportunity to achieve a healthy, active, independent life. So again, a very lofty, broad goal and vision for our organization and how we do that on more uh, of a smaller scale, granular level, is we provide opportunities within our community, within our region and within our country um, so people with physical disabilities can um, have access to a healthy life um, and have access to physical activity opportunities. And we do this through uh, grassroots physical activity programs. We do this through research and we also do this through advocacy and health promotion. So Cliff, do you wanna give a little bit of history of our organization? Yeah, so we, um have changed and progressed uh as the years have gone by and wanted to just give you a brief overview of what that history looks like 
um, for Lakeshore Foundation. In the early 1900s, um, we, Lakeshore Foundation was a tuberculosis um, clinic and um, individuals that had tuberculosis would come here to receive treatment. And it was that way for 50 years. And, and then in 1973, um, we uh, became the Lakeshore Rehabilitation Hospital. Um, and so for whatever rehabilitative needs there would, there would be, um, people would, would come and, and receive treatment um, for rehabilitation. Um, in 1984, we had um, the formation of the Birmingham Chariots, our, our first wheelchair basketball team. And it, it was developed out of the, uh, the idea that people needed more than just rehabilitation um, to lead, live a healthy lifestyle. Um, and what, what had been happening was people would come and be rehabilitated, they would leave, um, then they would enter the state of needing to receive rehab again and they would return. And there was the, the idea that, well, we actually need to have programming that allows people to be active beyond just the rehabilitative, re rehabilitative state. Um, so um, the wheelchair basketball team was formed and Lakeshore Foundation um, was created. Um, in 2001, um, Lakeshore Foundation got its own building. Um, so we um, are still on the same campus as the rehabilitation hospital, but Lakeshore Foundation um, got um, its own unique building that is complete with um, a field house, an aquatic center, a fitness center, um, and a research department um, as well. And then in 2003, um, we became recognized as a U.S. Olympic and Paralympic training site. Um, and so we will have national teams come in and train uh, at Lakeshore Foundation, and we um, are happy to be hosts to them um, and uh, just provide that opportunity for those teams. Um, and then um, in 2012, we were fortunate to be able to expand our reach even um, beyond uh, what we were doing. And we formed a partnership, a collaboration with the University of Alabama, Birmingham, um, a, a local university to form a research collaborative um, so that we can um, develop um, incredible research projects uh, using the, the, the team and the, re the resources that the University of Alabama Birmingham has, as well as Lakeshore. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. We, we've became the home of um, NICPAD, which I believe you've heard some about, but we will talk more about that. And then we also developed an advocacy and policy um, uh, department as well. And, and since then, we've, we've continued to develop. Um, in uh, 2019, we uh, expanded our physical uh, presence. We developed a $20 million expansion um, research wing on, onto the Lakeshore Foundation building um, and um, have, uh, that's where we, we have the UAB, um, the University of Alabama, Birmingham Collaborative and NICPAD and advocacy and policy departments. They're all housed over in that new research wing. So like Cliff said, we do a lot um, and our work is, is pretty diverse and pretty broad, but we, to kind of compartmentalize everything. Um, we kind of break everything down into three main pillars. Um, so we have our pillar of activity, our pillar of research, and our pillar of advocacy. Um, and so under activity, um, that is where you, what we're gonna talk a lot about today um, are our programs that fall under our pillar of activity. So those are our local aquatics, fitness, recreation, and athletic programs um, that we offer every day and every week, um, kind of functioning very much like your local um, gym 
gym or fitness facility. Um, so we do have a membership um, model here at Lecture Foundation where any person within our community that has a physical disability as well as their family members um, can join and use Lecture, facility, Lecture Foundation um, as their um, health and fitness facility. Um, we also have a lot of uh, after school programs for kids. Uh, we have um, athletic, competitive athletic teams for youth and adults with disabilities. Um, and like Cliff mentioned, we're also uh, a US Olympic and Paralympic training site. So we also have elite Olympic and Paralympic athletes and teams that are um, coming to Lakeshore for training camps and getting ready for international competition. Um, we also are the home and the national governing body for USA wheelchair rugby. Um, so that's just another thing that we do under kind of our pillar related to activity and physical activity. And then Cliff mentioned research. So we do a lot of research at Lecture Foundation. Now, this research is not like medical research. Um, this research is focused um, in a few areas. Number one, sports science. So really measuring um, the effectiveness of our elite athletic programs um, and really creating a lot of baseline data related to para, para athletes and Paralympic athletes. Um, because right now there's not a lot of baseline data on um, you know, what it means to be the most optimally healthy and elite Paralympic athlete. A lot of the baseline data is um, only for people without disability, not people with disability. So we're working to create a lot of data um, related to elite athletes with disability. Um, within research, we're also studying um, the programs that we're offering. We really want to offer evidence-based programs um, where we really can see and measure the benefits of what we're doing as an organization. And then we're also doing a lot of research um, in the space of uh, um, engineering and technology. So uh, we're doing studies uh, like creative access creating accessible um, video game control. So people can uh, play video games um, in a more active and inclusive way if they have disabilities. Um, things like using um, telehealth and technology to um, connect people through different um, health programs across our country. Uh, so doing a lot of research using technology as well. And then lastly, we have advocacy. And again, we recognize that um, while our focus is on sport and physical activity, uh, we as an organization are a part of a very big movement and that's the disability movement and the disability rights movement. And so we understand that um, although the disability rights movement has come, along, come a long way in our country and in the world globally, we still have a long way to go. And we recognize that people with disabilities don't currently have um, equal rights to people without disabilities. So we are engaged in advocacy and policy, and we really are working with the disability community, not just for the disability community, but with the disability community um, to ensure that people with disabilities um, have more rights uh, to be physically active in whatever way they choose. And NICPAD, you probably have already heard a little bit about NICPAD um, from Alex, but NICPAD uh, is also a part of our organization. We work very collaboratively with NICPAD um, with their goal of creating healthy, inclusive communities. So we recognize that um, geography is a big barrier for people um, with disabilities and their um, ability to access a healthy, active lifestyle. Um, Lakeshore is a unique facility um, and not many people have access um, in our country and in our world to facilities like Lakeshore Foundation. So we must um, do a good job of extending outside of our four walls and creating inclusive, you know, health communication, inclusive public policy um, and public health practices, um, inclusive curriculum um, in communities. So we work really closely with NICPAD to help disseminate um, what we do here at Lakeshore to the broader world and more communities. I'm gonna take a quick little sip of my drink before we move to the next slide. And so I'm sure um, 
who everyone on this call today probably comes from a, a diverse background, uh, a diverse professional background, lived experience background. And so I wanted to give you a little bit of background on kind of how adapted in para sport um, is modeled in the United States and a very general pipeline um, in the United States of, of how um, adapted in para sport is governed and modeled in the US. This is not um, uh, an official uh, model. Uh, but this is just kind of to give you a background on how adapted and para sport is kind of um, facilitated and governed in the United States. So um, in the United States, you have your grassroots community para sport organizations. Um, and so Lakeshore plays a very important role in providing those very entry level grassroots community based programs, um, not only to compete in sport, but just to live an active, healthy life, uh, whether that be um, you know, focused on nutrition or uh, fitness or health and wellness and not simply focused on sport. You also have at that grassroots level in our country, um, a growing scholastic sport program. So in a lot of uh, elementary um, and high schools, um, so before you get to secondary education, um, you will have inclusive sport programs. Now, this is not across the United States. Um, it's growing, but there are inclusive sport opportunities um, in schools. Um, and there should be inclusive sport opportunities in school. Um, in fact, it is mandated, um, but it's, it's growing slowly. And then you also have um, adapted and para sport programs within um, universities and colleges in the United States. So an individual, um, a child can, um, learn about a para sport um, from a grassroots community program. They can train in that sport um, and receive um, a scholarship to attend a university um, and play that sport uh, in, at a university. So that's another way people um, with disabilities can be involved in a higher level of para sport in our country is through university. And then you also have um, our para sport national governing body. So all of the different Paralympic sports um, in our country have a specific national governing body. Um, like I mentioned, Lakeshore Foundation, we are actually the national governing body of, of wheelchair rugby, of USA wheelchair rugby. Um, but there's a national governing body for wheelchair basketball, for goalball, for track and field. And those organizations really govern um, and organize both grassroots uh, level of play as well as elite level of play. And then you get kind of to the final upper echelon of para and adapted sport in the United States. And that is with the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee. And so that is the organization that governs um, the most elite uh, athletes in sports um, in our country. Um, so Cliff, do you wanna talk a little bit about um, we just kind of talked about the highest level of elite competition, and now we're going to bring it all the way back down to the grassroots level of what we're offering um, on a community level at Lakeshore. Yeah, thanks. And so the, we're going to be looking at the activity pillar um, that Mary Allison was talking about earlier, um, and that is the programs that we provide for our members at Lakeshore, um, and wanted to just give you an overview of kind of a more in-depth look at opportunity that is available. Um, this isn't all that we have, um, but it's it's a pretty good summary of, of what we have available. Um, so first, we're going to break this down into two categories. We have recreation programs for individuals um, where people participate to enjoy it. They participate to um, have fun. Um, they participate just for the sake of exercise. Um, the, the outcome or the score of whatever sport you're playing is irrelevant. Um, it is purely recreation. And on the other side, we're going to talk about athletic programs where uh, rules are sacred and the, the score does matter and you're playing to win. Um, so first, let's look at our recreation programs. For our children, um, they have opportunities to participate in um, aquatics programs where we'll have function-based programs or um, even teaching 
children how to swim. Um, we also have a program that we refer to um, called Fresh um, that takes place in our field house after school. Um, and this is a program that is designed to get children active um, and engaged um, in, act, in physical activity um, where they will play different games. Um, and they're just, they can be silly games that encourage movement, um, but the, the whole idea of uh, Fresh is to get kids just active and moving around. Um, then we have a, a, a program called Kid Power, and this is a, um, a fitness program for our youth, and uh, it looks more like traditional exercise um, that our youth get to participate in. Um, and then outside of that, we have youth camps that we offer, and these are usually daily camps um, where the participants will come in from at nine o'clock uh, in the morning and, and stay until three o'clock or four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and we will do different games and activities. Sometimes these camps are recreation based um, and sometimes they're uh, sport based. Um, but the, the whole idea is to get kids active um, and introduced to different sports and activities. Um, and, and actually each camp does have different goals that we want to get out of it. For recreation activities for our adults, um, we, we offer bocce, um, which I believe most of you all will be familiar with. Um, and we offer tennis, um, table tennis as well, and uh, pickleball and golf. Um, there's wheelchair football, which I do want to get more into depth about um, as a model for a sport that is inclusive. Um, but we also offer wheelchair softball, wheelchair rugby, cycling, shooting, and archery. Um, and again, these aren't competitive sports for our, our members, but they are um, just recreation opportunities to introduce people to the sport and get them to, um, to perhaps want to pursue it more or not. It, it's up to the individual. Um, they, they can do it just for the sake of enjoyment. So our athletics programs, this is where competition matters and the athlete is performing at their, their highest and we are pushing athletes to perform at their best and um, striving to win. Um, and so for our, our youth, we offer track and field, power soccer, wheelchair basketball, goalball, swimming, tennis, and archery. And these programs tend to be pretty exclusive to our members our indi um, and individuals that have a physical uh, disability. Same with the uh, adult programs where we offer tennis, wheelchair football, wheelchair rugby, wheelchair basketball, swimming and power soccer. Um, our adults and, and youth will practice. Um, they have organized practices several times a week. And then we travel around the country and um, compete against other organized teams around the country. Um, and the, the model is we will have um, tournaments where we compete and then there's usually a nationals championship um, at, at the end of the season. And everyone is striving to, to win the national championship and be the best in the country um, in these different grassroots level programs. So we've talked um, a lot about what we do at Lakeshore, um, but we really want to talk about some of um, our philosophy of, um, behind um, how we engage what we do um, in the community, um, because we really, really are very um, mindful of that. The work that we do at Lakeshore is very important, but we cannot keep what we do hidden and we cannot keep what we do a secret. Um, we must be a part of our community um, and we must not um, create segregation, um, but we must create unity through what we do in our community. Um, and I think that's a really, really challenging thing to do and probably something that you have found in your field of work that can be really challenging is bringing you know, the disability community um, 
and and integrate the disability community within the broader community and allow the broader non-disabled community to feel like they are a part of the disability community as well. And we all can be um, moving and physically active together in an inclusive way. So kind of four areas that we have focused on to promote this idea of inclusion in our physical activity and what we do is number one, trying to make as many as many of our recreation programs as inclusive as possible. So um, I mentioned earlier that Lakeshore does operate under a membership model where um, to become a member of Lakeshore Foundation and use it as your local community um, fitness and recreation facility, you do need to have a some type of physical disability or be a family member of a person with a physical disability. But we do have a lot of programs that don't require the person to have a physical disability. Um, anyone from the community can come and join. Cliff's gonna talk to you about a few of those programs um, in, a, in a minute, but number one, creating inclusive programs where people with and without disability can participate together. Um, number two, a really focusing on bringing the community into our four walls of Lakeshore um, as much as possible. Then number three, bringing what we do at Lakeshore into the community. Um, if individuals aren't able to come to us, then we really try to come to the individuals and not just the individuals, but community organizations, schools, um, other uh, grassroots community-based programs uh, that maybe don't um, provide opportunities for people with physical disability. We're gonna go to them um, and educate them on how they can make their programs more exclusive, in inclusive, excuse me, inclusive. And then lastly is um, partnerships, um, having higher level um, partnerships with um, both large scale and small scale organizations um, to ensure that um, the, our mission um, is being broadly um, achieved. So Cliff, so, do, you want, do you want to talk about our recreation programs? Yes. So um, the, these are inclusive recreation programs that we've designed. The Originally at Lakeshore, we did not have inclusive programs, but had programs specific for individuals with disability and chronic health conditions. It was programs specific to our members um, and not open to the community. And it, what it did was offer opportunity for people with disability, but in a segregated way. Um, it wasn't inclusive in the reverse sense to where people without disabilities could participate. Um, and so we started to develop a model where we bring in people from the community and allow them to participate alongside um, our, our members and, and uh, people with disability. And what we did was identify different sports and programs where this makes sense that you could do that and, and participate alongside each other with very little um, adaptations needed. Um, and so these are just a few examples of some of the programs that we, we have that are inclusive, um, but we have wheelchair football, run, roll, tennis, pickleball, and cycling. Um, and all, all of these activities can be done um, and are done um, participated in by people with and without disabilities. And so I want to hone in on um, wheelchair football a little bit more and look specifically at how do we achieve this? How do we make this something that uh, is, is inclusive? So what, what we did is we said we, we had this sport, wheelchair football, and we developed rules for it. Um, and we essentially said we want people with and without disabilities to play on the same court at the same time. So naturally, um, we, we had to divide rule, devise rules that make it um, fair and equitable for everyone to participate. So um, we fortunately have enough um, equipment to be able to do that. And so everyone plays using a wheelchair, um, whether you have a disability or you don't, everyone uses a wheelchair. Um, and um, we uh, just had everyone, once you established that, the rules, that rest of the rules kind of took care of themselves and um, people uh, would just participate and uh, play as hard as they can. And the, the playing field had been leveled out and um, it was a lot of fun. Um, we, 
what in order to recruit people to participate, what we did was invite different businesses and organizations and teams from around our community to come in and participate against our members. And so there would be our member, our Lakeshore team, that was quite organized and, and pretty good um, against a, a brand new community team that probably had never pushed in a wheelchair before. Um, but this was a recreation program. Um, and there were a few different goals that we were trying to achieve. A goal wasn't to achieve the highest level of competition that we possibly could. Um, if you were looking to do that, you wouldn't recruit uh, individuals from the community that had never pushed a chair before. Um, but a, and a, goal, a goal was to create an inclusive recreation program that everyone could participate in. And um, this was possible um, through this program. We wanted people to be exposed to adapted sports as well. So um, we targeting and bringing different community groups, they may not have been familiar with wheelchair sports or adapted sports. And um, this allowed them to one, not to see it and, um, and learn about it through seeing it, but also doing it and participating in it themselves, seeing how fun it is um, and how challenging it can be as well. Um, and then the, the third goal that we would get out of it was broaden the perspective of disability um, and, and perhaps uh, just make disability not as foreign of a concept. Um, or um, if you had a very specific narrow-minded view about disability, it perhaps has changed after um, sitting down and playing right alongside someone with a disability. Um, and oftentimes we found that that was the case. So Cliff has talked um, um, some about our efforts to bring people in to Lakeshore to expose them to what we do and kind of broaden our reach. But um, we also realized that we had to bring Lakeshore out into the community. Um, and this, I think we found has been quite challenging in, at times. And I think the most challenging thing has been creating reciprocal reciprocal relationships um, with the community, uh, especially, especially within our school system. Um, Alex Martinez, who you know uh, from the previous uh, sessions that you've been on, um, he works very hard um, each and every day to ensure that um, children in our country have access to um, accessible and inclusive physical activity opportunities at school. And this is something that we've tried to do um, as an organization um, in our local community. Uh, so we have had many different um, versions uh, and many different ways we've tried to do this. And one thing we kept realizing is that the schools loved for us to come um, and bring adapted sport into the school and teach them but the schools never really took on a, a big responsibility once we left of this is something that they can continue when we are not there. And so we created uh, something called the School Sport Project um, in 2016. And this was in the lead up to the Rio 2016 Olympic and Paralympic Games. Um, and basically the whole goal of of this project was to create a more reciprocal relationship between Lakeshore and our local schools. And so we partnered with three local schools, um, local, uh, it was an elementary school and um, a middle school. So it was second graders, um, eighth graders, and then a smaller school that uh, had, I believe, kindergartner to eighth graders. Um, so we partnered with these schools and we had three different, three different components to the school sport project. We had a sport assembly, a sport field trip, and a sport lesson. And so the sport assembly is where we designated um, and assigned a Paralympic sport to that school that they were going to learn about and study um, for a three-month period. And so we came to the school, we did a presentation about that sport. Um, the sports were wheelchair basketball, goalball, and wheelchair rugby. Um, and so each school was assigned a sport. And we came and we did a presentation where we brought equipment related to that sport. We told uh, the kids and the children and the teachers about the rules of the sport um, and how to play the sport. 
And then component number two was a sports field trip where those school children came to our facility, came to Lakeshore Foundation, um, and they had the opportunity to watch one of our elite level uh, Paralympic teams uh, compete and train in that sport. We have the privilege of being an Olympic and Paralympic training site, and this was during the lead up to the Rio 2016 Games. So we had our national goalball team, we had our national women's wheelchair basketball team, and we had our national wheelchair rugby team training at Lakeshore. Um, so we were able to bring the school kids to our facility to watch those elite level athletes train. They had one-on-one um, -on -one, uh, sessions with the athletes where they could ask them questions. The athletes could ask the kids questions to really create those relationships and get the teachers and the kids excited about para sport. And then lastly, uh, component three, which in my opinion was the most important component. And that was the component where the school really had to take on responsibility of um, teaching that sport um, in the physical activity setting in the school. So the uh, school had to incorporate the school's designated sport and um, into their PE curriculum. So they had to do a wheelchair basketball lesson or a goalball lesson. Um, and Lakeshore helped facilitate that. Um, we were able to provide some equipment. We were able to provide staffing. Um, but it really was the responsibility of the school and the physical activity teachers and physical education teachers in the school to develop um, create that curriculum in that lesson that would be inclusive for all of the students, uh, whether they had a disability or not, that would promote that Paralympic sport. Um, and we found the program um, to be pretty successful. Again, it's, it's always challenging of continuing uh, the progress once we leave, um, but we could see a real impact um, that this uh, project had on uh, those three schools. And we also had um, I think another good result of this was we were able to reach many kids within the schools who had disabilities um, that were now learning about Lakeshore. So not only could they have inclusive opportunities at their school, but then after school, they could come to Lakeshore and participate in more opportunities at Lakeshore. And so lastly, um, we're talking, we're going to talk about uh, partnerships and um, one partnership we're really excited about right now is um, Lakeshore has partnered with uh, the World Games, which is an uh, international multi-sport competition very similar to the Olympic or Paralympic Games um, that is going to be hosted in Birmingham, uh, the city where Lakeshore Foundation is located in the summer of 2022. Um, it was postponed a year due to the pandemic, just like the Olympic and Paralympic Games. But we are partnering with the World Games to establish an initiative for disability inclusion and access. Um, and so this is a very high level partnership with this um, at this multi-sport international event that we're really excited uh, to embark upon. Um, and there's three main focus areas of this um, initiative. And so that is to ensure that the athlete experience is inclusive. And one of the main ways uh, we're excited to do that is that we are, are going to have um, a, an adapted or disability sport um, on the roster of sports featured at the World Games. So it's going to be low point wheelchair rugby. So this is the first time the World Games will have a para or disability sport featured um, and competed at the games. Then we also want to focus on the fan experience and ensure that fans with and without disabilities have equitable experiences um, in as spectators uh, when they attend the World Games. And then lastly, we're working to um, ensure that training and education also includes um, uh, disability access and inclusion so that all the volunteers who are going to be volunteering at the games are going to be trained on how to um, interact with people with disabilities and, and um, the different accommodations that people with disabilities uh, may need um, and educating people about that. So it's a more inclusive and accessible experience for uh, not only the athletes, the fans, but also the volunteers. Um, and the staff that are working on the games, really encouraging people with disabilities to become volunteers during these games and making it a more inclusive environment. And so not only are we um, really looking at this on a broad scale of how can we impact and make these worldwide multi-sport 
events more inclusive, but we're also using this as an opportunity to create local community engagement with some of the sports that we offer at Lakeshore. Uh, so Cliff, you can talk a little bit about some of our community engagement um, events that we will be doing related to para sport during the World Games. Yeah, so one of the things that we're looking at doing is um, offering a wheelchair football. It's back. Uh, we, we keep referring to it, um, but it's we're we're going to be offering a wheelchair football exhibition um, game at uh, at the World Games, um, where we will have a huge um, we will have a huge gathering of people um, to w watch and. Um, be exposed to the sport um, and not only will it be local community the local community that will be able to see the sport um, but it will be people from around the world and so we wanted to make sure that we capitalized on this opportunity and work with the world games to be able to expose um, not only wheelchair football but just adapted sport in general um, and then we're going to be setting up uh, just exhibition exhibition stations where people um, from around the community can um, perhaps hop in wheelchairs and try out different um, adapted sports and opportunities um, themselves, um, similar to uh, what you would see at just a regular exhibition um, or expo um, where um, there's different booths set up and you can um, have just a small experience yourself. Um, we're, we're looking to do that. Um, and beyond the world games the, the thing is is like it's important to partner di with different um events and um competitions uh and and it's simple to um if, if you can get in the door um like another example that we're working with is um a local bike race that is actually um it prior to us joining it was um it was exclusive to people without disabilities and they had um, different racers from around the country come in and participate um, in, in the bike race. Um, but what we did is we got involved and we created a hand cycling division as well. And so um, now para, para athletes from around the country come in and participate. And so um, it, it's looking at the activities and events that are going on around and, and deciding can this be inclusive? And if so, maybe partner with them and help them um, make these events more inclusive. Um, it, it's important to help the movement of Paralympic and um, adapted sport. Um, and it's, it's important in growing opportunities for people with disabilities. And so, to wrap everything up, if you can wrap all of that up um, nice and neatly, uh, keys to successful engagement and participation um, of adapted and para sport. Um, we recognize that we have so many resources um, available to us at Lakeshore Foundation. Um, and we are very unique in that way. And we understand that not everyone has the same resources that we do. Not everyone has the same amount of adapted sport equipment that we may have, um, especially like, like in our state and in our region and in our country. And so there are just some basic things that we can think about that help us really create more successful inclusive programs. And that number one is choosing an activity that's easily inclusive. <laughs> um, some sports are much more um, easily adaptable than others. Um, so sports like gold ball, sitting volleyball, bocce, tennis, those types of sports and activities really require very little equipment and they really require very little adaptation and they lend themselves to allow people with and without disability to come as they are and participate together. Um, so really starting with those programs um, that you know don't require a fleet of 20 wheelchair basketball chairs or wheelchair rugby chairs um, set um, you and your program up for success. And, so, and then finally, just knowing your target audiences and how to market to them and what you should be marketing to them. Um, this is something from my perspective as a communicator is very challenging is knowing um, 
when people with disabilities uh, want to feel uh, very close within their disability community, and when people with disabilities want to feel very um, included in broader communities. And so how do you take a sport and a program and allow everyone to see themselves represented in that sport and program and feel like they can be invited and participate and be successful? Um, so an example of that is making sure your marketing materials for your programs include people with and without disability, if your program is for people with, with, with and without disability. Um, make sure that people with disability feel like they will still be successful when they are participating um, with people without disabilities and making sure people without disabilities feel like they're going to be successful uh, competing and participating with people with disabilities. So thinking very critically about how your different audiences are going to feel represented and safe to participate. And that is really gonna set you up for success. So I know we've talked a lot and I think now is the time where we're going to be quiet for a minute and let um, you ask any questions that you might have. And I think Alex, you might help us facilitate this. Yeah, so thank you, Mary Allison and Cliff for providing such a great presentation. I, I truly enjoyed it. Um, and I, I think really, you know, for educators, uh, there's, a, there's a need to be able to to know what's in the community, you know, if there are programs like this in the community, oftentimes, you know, students participate in after school programs or after school communities because a teacher have told them to, you know, we have this available and get the kids connected to those programs. And, and that's really important. And you also saw that initiative of us, you know, Lecture Foundation trying to go into the school. So, um, you know, within those partnerships, if there's programs, that can come to your school, you know, I advise everyone to really get connected in the community, get those programs to you, um, and then get kids to learn about inclusive sports. Um, I was going to mention um, with the world games that are coming in um, next year, we have done a lot of uh, work with them. We also created um, a toolkit that is just for educators. It does, it does have a physical component. Uh, uh, physical education components. So there are sports that are highlighted into those toolkits. Um, so I'm gonna share the link here. I understand um, that is in English, but um, if in some form of way you can access it and utilize um, the materials, feel free to use them. Uh, we will be thrilled to know that, you know, um, you guys are using those resources. Uh, it took a lot of efforts from educators to get together and create those resources. So they're there for you. So reach out and, and, and I'll get them if, if you if you feel interested. So I just posted the link here on the chat. So feel free to access that. And with that, um, Vladimir, if there are any questions uh, that came through the chat or anyone wants to unmute their phone and ask a question, we'll be happy to answer those at this time. Уважаемые слушатели, если у кого-то есть вопросы, можете задавать. One second, we're, we're waiting for questions. Yeah, I think there's a question on the chat. Um, how COVID situation influenced your activities? I think that uh, uh, Cliff and uh, American can, Mary Allison can give us some information on that. I know that. I remember how uh, the recreation and athletics program have to be really creative to work with those summer camps, uh, those youth camps that we were talking about. So I left Cliff uh, span on that a little bit more. Yeah, I'll, I'll address that. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, when we were learning about the COVID um, and understanding what it was, or rather not understanding what it was, and there was a lot of um, uncertainty um, and, and just fear around it. Um, we uh, had to shift all of our programming to virtual and at-home resources. Um, and so we would create programs that could be done from someone's couch in their living room. 
Um, and we, uh, we were often facilitating those programs from our own living room. Um, and um, since then, um, we have come back to the facility. Um, we still have quite a few um, COVID regulations in place. Um, to um, encourage uh, our members to stay safe. Um, we at our facility still require um, that we wear masks at all times unless we're in an isolated area. Um, and that, that includes when we're playing sports where we're wearing masks. Um, and then when we, um, we do encourage social distancing when we can as well. Um, but the other thing that we've seen is our participation numbers um, in the pandemic are down. Um, we, we don't have the participation that we had prior to the pandemic, um, just because I think people um, are still um, cautious about coming out and, um, and participating, um, not wanting to contract COVID or spread it. Yeah, uh, thanks Olga for that question. I was just also gonna mention that one of the things that Lakeshore did as a whole uh, was to really understand what, what people needed. So we've created a survey that we disseminated nationally and we were able to get responses of what systems or supports, you know, people with disability needed during this time. And we did the same things for educators. Um, so one of the things that we found out is that now we have a situation where most of the physical education programs were offered at home uh, virtually. So now we have parents that were trying to balance work life situation um, with uh, their, their kids education. Uh, they really didn't need it know how to incorporate uh, or help or aid, you know, there's uh, their kids into adaptive physical education because they don't have the skills or knowledge. So we had to come up with resources and we created videos for for kids and like Cliff said, you know, we, we did those in our, on our homes and we created articles to help parents um, really guide uh, the information and the instructions of the day with their kids. So um, there was a lot of challenges with COVID. I think within the uh, disability community, one of the things that uh, in a sense brought this to light is that, you know, a lot of times our work can be done from can be done from home. A lot of times, people with disabilities will need um, that um, you know that opportunity to be able to work from home. You know, transportation is limited; uh, it's not accessible most of the times, at least here in the U.S. So, giving people the opportunity to work from home, I think, has expanded the opportunity for people with disabilities to be employed, and I think that's a plus. Um, so I don't know at what level that made an impact yet, but I know that a lot of the bigger corporations and organizations are realizing that, you know what, our work can be done from home and that will release some of the, the costs of, you know, having an office and having to get people, uh, you know, in cars and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So, so I would just, I just wanted to add that. Uh, there's another question here. Do you care it was about do? ages? Yeah. Yeah. We, so we do, we, we provide programming for um, youth, our children as young as three years old. Um, and then we, we have members that are even younger than that. Um, and we serve individuals from that age all the way. I believe our oldest member is 99 years old. Um, and so there's programs and opportunities for people um, here, uh, regardless of your age. And aquatics is a really good entry point for our youngest members. We have um, a class uh, that's called Wet Tots, um, and that is for little ones ages six months um, to three or four. And so that's a child and parent class where they come and get in the water together um, and just kind of learn how to move um, in the water. So it's, uh, it's 10 o'clock here in the U.S. Да, у нас уже, у нас уже, 
sorry. Go, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it's, it's 10 o'clock. I know that, you know, we've scheduled one hour, one hour time. I'll be happy to stay longer if needed. Um, but uh, I know Cliff and, and Mary Allison might have, you know, might have other engagements. So um, if there are more questions, I'll be happy to try to answer that. But if not, I'll, I'll let uh, Cliff and MA uh, go and, um, and I'll be happy to stay here. Well, thank you all so much. And we wish you all the best in your endeavors and we hope you have a wonderful evening. Yes, thank you all. Thank you. Uh, Alex? Yeah, yeah um, I, I'm it, here. It, yeah, it, it, lo it looks like they, uh, uh, they finished because I, I haven't heard from them anything. Sounds, sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. All right. And, uh, we'll, be, we'll be seeing each other uh, next time.